Praise the Lord. God bless you. And welcome to Pastor's Corner again, where I'm able to just share a thought coming from the Word of God. But first of all, being that we're in the holiday seasons, we just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. And being that it's Christmas, it's uh, going to be Christmas on December the 25th. And today is Monday, and we know that Christmas is right around the corner. And we know that there's just people all over getting ready for Christmas and the holidays and the stores are filled and the freeways are packed and people are just up and down moving around and everybody's getting ready for this special day and it is a special day. It's a special day because for the Christians we believe that it's a time where Christ was born and Christ was given to the world. He is our Savior. He is God. And I just want to thank God for my salvation. I want to thank God for the ministry of Victory Outreach that reached my life uh, when I was 19 years old, 29 years ago. And we found ourselves doing a work of God. And now we're here in Dallas. And we've been here for 17 years. And we have a beautiful church and a beautiful congregation. And on behalf of our church, Victory Outreach Church of Dallas, we want to wish you a very happy holiday season. Uh, and I just wanted to share uh, something from the Bible. And I know that it'll bless you. Amen. It's something that I've been preaching on uh, since December started. And we've been talking about the shepherds. And we've been talking about Christmas and the Christ. And, and so I just want to go into the Word of God and just share with you a few things that are found in the Old Testament. And I'm going to read from the Old Testament first, which is going to be Isaiah 7.14. And then we're going to go into the book of Matthew, which is the New Testament, Matthew's chapter 7, Matthew's chapter 1, verses 18. Let me read to you Isaiah 7, 14. It says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and he will be called Emmanuel. Now, here is a portion of scripture found in the Old Testament where the prophet Isaiah is talking to Ahaz and Ahaz is considered to be an evil king and Ahaz is not doing right he's not living right and for some reason the prophet gives him a sign of what's to come in the future and what will take place in the future Will King Ahaz be around to see it? No, he won't. Will Ahaz be around to know about it? No, he won't. But the prophet begins to share this with him to prove to him and to let him know that Christ would come into the world and the way that he would come into the world would be through a virgin. It would be a virgin birth. Now, do you know that there are many churches and there are many pastors and there are many theologians and even in Christian universities, professors that are preaching and teaching that the virgin birth did not take place. And we as believers and we as Christians know that Christ came into the world through a virgin. And this virgin, her name was Mary. And you find her story and you find the fulfillment of prophecy from Isaiah 7:14. You find the fulfilled prophecy in Matthew chapter 1, verses 18. It says this. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man. And did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid. Take Mary home as your wife, because what is con conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son. And you will give him the name Jesus because he will save the people from their sin. All this took place. Now it's going to take us back to Isaiah 7, 14. What the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel. Now in Matthew chapter 1 verses 
in verses 18 all the way down here to verse 21, it now tells us that his name will be Emmanuel and that his name, not only is it Emmanuel in verses 23, but he tells us what Emmanuel means. God is with us and he will save the people from their sins. Now, when you begin to look at Isaiah 7, 14, spoken by the prophet, and then it is fulfilled in Matthew's chapter 1. And you begin to see the story begin to unfold through the eyes of Matthew, the writer of the book of Matthew. And he begins to share with us, through his eyes, how this was all going to take place. And then he begins to share with us that Mary and Joseph were engaged to be married. And when they were engaged to be married, that Joseph had found out that she had become pregnant. And that in Deuteronomy chapter 22, it's a clear picture and a clear story in Deuteronomy 22 that he had every right to kill her for unfaithfulness. Any woman that would be pledged to a man and then find out that she wasn't a virgin and that she was unfaithful, she would be stoned to death. Joseph was a unique individual. He was different. What I'm trying to say is this, that Christ would come into the world through a family that understood the calling that they had upon their life. Mary was chosen by God, but know this, Joseph was chosen by God as well. Anyone else would have probably just taken it upon themselves and looked at the Mosaic law and said, I have every right now to destroy her and to kill her for unfaithfulness. And the Holy Spirit came and spoke to him. And then later on, it tells us that all this was to fulfill prophecy. It was to fulfill prophecy because the way God was sent his Holy Son into this world, it would have to be through something holy, something untouched, something pure. And it would be a virgin. And Joseph had to be that individual that had to understand what was going on? The Bible says that he wanted to put her away quietly. In other words, the Bible even says in the NIV translation that he didn't want to expose her or to disgrace her publicly. He was unique. He was different. Oh, this will help some of the marriages out there. For two people to come together and become one, there has to be an understanding. And that's what Joseph had. He understood what was going on. And he wanted to put her away publicly, ignoring the Mosaic law and not killing her. Why? Because Joseph loved Mary. And God had a plan for not just Mary, but God had a plan for Joseph. And my friend, listen to me. If you're watching this little message that I'm giving to you here, I want you to know that God has a plan for your life. That there is a purpose for your life. To fulfill prophecy. Prophecy that a mother said to someone, my son will serve the Lord. Prophecy that a father said, my daughter will serve the Lord. Our family will be saved, coming from the Bible. If you get saved, if you give your heart to God, then God will reach your whole family. There is fulfillment in prophecy. When we begin to preach, and we begin to teach, and we begin to say that God is going to reach out to the hurting people of the world. That God will use the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. He is using the ministry of Victory Outreach to reach out into the inner cities of the world. But not just that, my friend. We've come to a place in our ministry now where also God is reaching out to the blue collar and the white collar, the doctors and lawyers and, and, and others that have money and education and career. They're also realizing that money cannot buy everything and there's an emptiness inside. And they are also looking for Christ. They're looking for Jesus to fulfill what the Bible says. My plans I have for you, they're good. They're to prosper you. They're to bless you and not to harm you. That God says, I wish that none should perish, but that all will come to repentance. My friend, his name is Emmanuel, which means God is with us. God is with us. And this is the prophecy from the virgin. And my friend, listen to me. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. In other words, God doesn't use something old. God takes the old and makes it new, and then puts his spirit inside of you, and he begins to use you to the fullest. 
Not only that, he tells Nicodemus, that which is flesh is flesh. That which is of the spirit is spirit. Don't be surprised as I tell you, you must be born again. To receive Christ this holiday season for Christmas, you must be born again. For the greatest gift ever given to mankind comes through Jesus Christ, through our Lord and Savior. I hope and pray that this word blesses your heart. I hope and pray that it touches you, that it encourages you to know that God specializes in whatever it is you're going through. Take what is old and to make it new. God bless you. We love you. Victory Outreach Church of Dallas is here praying for your needs.